Andy's been at Kingswood Rest Home for 449 days. A lot of people say, oh, you should move on and that. Well, you can't. I couldn't do that to her. You've got to do the right thing. It's not a cross you carry on your back, doing what's right. If we were reversed, she'd be doing that for me as well. She's still my best friend. the wall there. What? Have a smoke? Yeah. OK. I go and visit her every Sunday for about two hours. It doesn't sound much, uh, but it is 73 k's away. So it's probably terrible to keep her smoking, but she only has a couple of a week, more or less. And they keep some here that I roll. They bring three or four every Sunday and put a butt at each end and they cut them in half because she doesn't... she want to put it out in a minute. I hate to say it, but she's the shell of a person I once knew. The most important part is died and gone, and I've got to accept that now. There's basically just a body left. So what have you been doing, buddy? You've had a shower today, have you? Yeah. You have a shower every morning? Yeah. Well, that's good. But I try and talk to her. Sometimes she says nothing at all. And sometimes she doesn't know who I am. And you're helping me he make you a little glory box, aren't you? What's it called? That box that she's pinning your dress on. Mandy's mother died in, I think, 2008 of this affliction called frontal early onset frontal temporal dementia, and that describes the, the area of the, br of the brain that it uh, savages and turns into Swiss cheese, basically. And not long after that, Mandy had found out she was positive for it. We didn't do much that night, probably got a bit drunk. Then the next day we uh, sat out on that step out there and just hugged each other. And um, just hugged each other and howled, basically. Hi, everybody. Hi, Mitch. Like this. Good day, actually. Good day? Yeah. 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 No mischief, no nothing. Mm. Eh? Any games? Claire and I met back in 1969 in Wellington at the um, downtown club. And uh, we just hooked up, stayed together, and then got married in uh, 1970. I was a young pup. I was younger than Claire by a year. So I was uh, 19 and Claire was 20. Yeah. We had a really good life. It, it was, yeah, it was all full of fun. Claire loved to dance, she loved the music. I loved music. We had lots of friends, but um, don't get on the wrong side of her. You know, she could be quite staunch. Anna, Anna. That works in the front of you, looks after you, Anna. She made you a, what they call a memory box. Oh. It's got all your things in there. Don't know. Yeah, you remember when you were hairdressing? Yeah. Yeah, and you used the tools here. You remember the dog? Remember Skip? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. You used to go and pinch food all around the street. Yeah, that was your favourite one. Remember that? Yep. That's when you were hairdressing. Oh. 1972. Well, that's me again. Oh, look at those two. Eh? Yep. A couple of lovebirds. We, we got married in 70, but we were trying hard to have kids and we couldn't have kids, remember? Five years. And you had an operation on your, um, one of your tubes and then boom, out they came. Stephanie, Janine and then Miriana. So we got six grandchildren, three boys and three girls. Wow. Yeah. Can't do that. Yeah. Done. <laughs> Done, no going back. <laughs> yeah. She was a stunner, yeah. Beautiful woman, you know. Attractive, had a good body. And, of course, when she danced, you know, she just let herself go, you know. She enjoyed a good time. I've only got to look at her in a certain way and I'll get a smile, you know, so it makes my day. She's still my sweetheart. She's still someone I hold dear. It's like losing someone, but you haven't lost them. There she goes. Come on. When I'm with her, I, I feel like it's just yesterday. Woohoo! Ooh, those hips are moving. Being with her now, the distance between the two of us it has its sad moments. But it also has wonderful moments when she looks up and sees my face and straight away recognises me. Really? And a big smile comes on the face. Yeah. That really lightens my, my day. Give a hug. I can't feel you. Well, we first met probably about 1984, and Mandy was probably um, <clears throat> about 17 or 18, and I was 10 years older. It was sort of a mutual attraction. Boy meets girl, and uh, girls' parents hate boys' guts, basically. And so things were, were pretty volatile for a while, but never mind, we persevered through. We got married about six years later when she was 25. As a person, she was quite independent and once she was determined to do something, she went ahead and did it. In those days, you smoked a lot of cigarettes and you drank a lot of booze. We rented a lot of dives because uh, they were cheap and uh, probably places that would be condemned these days, but that's how you lived in those days. We didn't have to have the flashiest car in the driveway, and so we never owed money to anyone, and we were never slaves to credit card debt or anything like that. So we come from that era where you didn't waste anything. It was more or less a hillbilly era where you, you ate all the poor stuff like pheasant and crayfish and smoked trout and that sort of thing, and you grew your own vegetables. When she left, uh, you're really in a state of being comfortably numb for a long time, and this cup of hers just sat there for about maybe six or nine months, until finally I got the courage to uh, put it up in that cupboard. But I suddenly thought, well, it's filthy dirty like she loved to have it, to get the taste of the tea, and um, I pinned a little note on it, Mandy's cup, no one use. Uh, it's probably only worth a dollar, but uh, that's where it stays. Because that's where it belongs. It's a shrine to some of the animals. I, I can look anywhere in this place and, and see her. I mean, you don't tidy up things or put things away because that's where she'd like to have them. 
It becomes part of you. You sort of keep thinking, oh, yeah, you'll leave things exactly as they were for when she comes home. And uh, finally, you, th you think she's not coming home. That might be the hat that she had at her wedding, perhaps. Looks like it, doesn't it? Something like that. Probably only skip materials this now, though. You wait there, Mum. You come around, yeah, come around this way, Kat. Well, I can't. There we go. Sit down. Sit. Living together was always nice. Oh, it's awesome. We could have our cuddles any time we wanted. Wherever we went, we were holding hands. Claire made me very, very happy. She always made me happy. <laughs> she always made me smile. You don't say. I want to get them up after oh, six, 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 seven. Yeah. Oh, well, here we go. Here we go. Look at this. Here we go, darling. He's just so, so dead. Companionship has always been the same. It's always, we're close. I'm visiting almost every day, sometimes two times a day. I just look forward to seeing her face. And I know she, she likes it in mine. Mm. Claire was diagnosed with early onset dementia at 62 years of age, yeah. You finished yours? I don't know where it does. Over here, right here. Mm. Right. So now you're up, you can do it. She was doing things a little bit odd. Forgetting how to make a cup of tea, I started putting a little post-it notes around, you know, to say, Tea, hot water, sugar, and so on and so forth. <laughs> she was hairdressing, and uh, she was having trouble working out a cash change. That's when we decided to go and see the doctor and get some tests done. And that was just real, uh, uh, like a real blow. It was like turning the light on to, this is what's what's happened. Got all my gear, darling. I'm off. Oh, yeah. The diagnosis was vascular dementia. Yeah. 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 The little blood vessels in the brain popping and exploding and losing their connections. You lose me. See you tomorrow, eh? See you tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Should do. See you guys. See you, mate. Yep. Can you let me out, Anna, please? Yeah. Gradually, uh, over the years, things become more difficult. See you, Kathy. Pop, pop. Later on, I had to start toileting her. And yeah, it's just things like that, it's just, it just, it really knocks you around. See you tomorrow. Bye. See you later. Bye. And what you like doing best is hopping onto my shoulder, isn't it? And we just go for big walks like this, don't we? Didn't really think of having kids. She had a few growths inside her that needed an operation. So she more or less had a hysterectomy at that point. That's why we didn't have kids, but now, later with all this carry on, it, uh, it was probably a blessing anyway. A lot of things that were Claire's are still in place. I don't want to unmove them. It just gives me a little bit of a reminder. Looking at some of those photos, you know, just take you back into a lot of the good times that we had. Sort of sitting around the table with family with a guitar and singing. You're confused, but I'm here with you. Please don't be angry. Sad or lost. I realize that you need me, and I'll be here at all costs. The major coping mechanism for me is music, playing in the band, playing music for the rest home. Just know that I'll always love you. Even when your best is gone, I will always be beside you and love you until all 
that is live is his song. When she was diagnosed, she was really remarkable. To, to use some of her language, you know, she said, oh, well, shit happens, you know, stuff like that. She would use that attitude. She took it on the chin bravely, yeah. I was the one doing all the hurting. was probably about maybe 44 or 45 when things just started to go a bit peculiar. She's only 52 now. It's, it's very hard when you're living with someone to notice uh, the changes because it's so gradual. So other people have to tell you, gee, this, things aren't quite right there. Mindy, can we have some breakfast, love? Yeah. Come on, we can have some breakfast. We can have some breakfast, come on. It got to the point where she couldn't drive any longer after she smashed up one car and put a few major dents in the next one. Things like that, then they change your life where you've got to take a shopping and take a day off every second week to do that or something like that, you know. So you evolve to try and cope with the with this illness. Can I put this on? Down to Mandy. Down to Mandy, darling. She got to a point where she couldn't cook anymore. The potatoes would have nothing in the pot and they'd burn to death or they'd be raw when they were on the plate. So I started doing the cooking, which I didn't mind, but when you're busy, it became a bit monotonous. I tried to make her do the dishes and it was a terrible thing. I actually stood behind her and forced her hands to wash the dishes. I said to her, you can't, can you? She said, no. And um, I said, I'm so sorry, uh, please forgive me. And uh, she said nothing. The psychiatrist more or less took one look at what she was doing and said she should have been in care six months ago. So that was it. Uh, and. It had to be done very quickly, within a matter of days, uh, otherwise I wouldn't have done it. The night before, I just threw what I could into a couple of suitcases, everything she had, and as I was putting it in, she was taking it out. I think she had a, an idea of what might be going to happen. Um, and I think I told her some lie about where we were going that day, and I picked up my friend Buster at Teapoy, and uh, he came uh, with me for moral support. Um, so we went into the building and um, when we pulled up, she said, please, Peter, please, I'm not ready yet. Uh, and you think about that every day. You, you never lose the, the guilt of the betrayal. That's why I can say to you it's 449 days uh, since I put her away because I, I, keep her, I keep it on the calendar. It's, um, there's some sort of a logical sanity to doing that. Probably one of the hardest days of my life, doing that to her. On her birthday, her first birthday when she was in there, she'd been in there only a couple of weeks, so I took her a card and um, she could read things and that then and speak properly. And I think in the card I wrote, I still want to sing you a love song every day. She read it and she said, oh, that's silly, why? And I said, uh, to make up for the days that I should have, when I didn't. Uh, you do feel robbed because she's only 52 now. She's been robbed of what she could have had. I don't think there's any uh, rhyme or reason, it's just straight biology that these things happen, random, random biology. Things will never, ever go back the way they were. You dream every day that they might. That's just how it is. Hello. Hello there. Hello. How are you? How's the troops? Yeah, we're good, how are you? 
Yeah, it's I'm David. good. Yeah. Have you had a good day? Yeah. When I reach out, I'll always go to my daughters. They are always, Dad, what are you doing? What did you do today? Uh, she was a good mum today. She was a happy mum. Oh, the, other, the other day was a grumpy mum. It, it's not necessarily the same daughter all the time. It's a different one. I don't know whether they get a meeting together and they decide, oh, you ring. On Friday, the neighbour's dog attached the chicken. <laughs> the, the impact on the, on the girls, initially it was really, really sad. Yeah. They took it, uh, it took them a wee while to sort of grasp what was what was going on, but once they got a hold of it, you know, then all they want to do is, is be there as, as much as they can. Yeah. Mm. Suddenly when you're living alone, you've gone through a phase just before that of trying to look after her. Suddenly all that changes where you've got to learn to look after yourself. You've got to remember to do things at certain times. You come home to a, an empty house and there's no one uh, there to meet you at the door. sit down for a couple of minutes and then suddenly it's half past seven and you think, holy shit, I haven't eaten tea yet. I'd better try and figure it out. You, you do feel lonely. A lot of people talk about support and all that sort of thing. Well, for a long time, my support was Miss Tui and her 11 sisters, basically, every night. I was pestered by the Alzheimer people for a while to go and join them and all, but a lot of these people are elderly. I'm busy trying to cope looking after myself, still young enough to be working. So you haven't got time for, to go to a barbecue with the bewildered once a month or whatever. It's probably at the end of the day when you're starting to unwind that you almost think, well, what the hell's the point of all this? You feel like you've been shot and you're not dead. You feel numb. In fact, for the first month, I'd go outside and just scream some nights looking at the moon. I'd almost see a face in it. I want to be around to look after Claire for as long as Claire's around. It's my job. When Claire went in and I was on my own, I was finding it hard in an empty house. I'd swear I'd be sitting watching TV and I'd swear I heard her get out, get out of bed. You know, I'd be in bed sleeping and I'm sure I seen one of the lights come on. It's just all those little things that you know, were sort of going through my mind. Turning a program on that she used to love and laugh at. You know, it just does those little little trips that trip you up, yeah. Come on, let's hop into bed, eh? Tuck you one? Mm hmm Okay. There we are. Okay, you gonna lie down? Nothing. You wanna lie down? You have to be nice for Okay, me. come on then. I've got you. There we go. Nice and warm. You wanna give a good night kiss? Mwah. Good night. See you tomorrow. Okay. Sweet dreams, darling. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. Happy day. Cheers, buddy. Well, look at that. All right. No, Mandy. Bit stable? Or? No. No. She always needs help, even walking or standing up now. So it's. Yeah. When you put them away, for want of a better word, it was the hardest thing that you can never forgive yourself for. Um, because what if you misjudged it? What if they could have been home for another week? It was like um, abandoning someone in trouble. Um, yeah, it was like um, pushing something aside that you couldn't handle. 
like it's important for us to carry on doing what we're doing and, and, and that's basically carrying our guilt. Maybe you, you need to get rid of it to move forward because while, while you're getting eaten up with it, it's probably no good physically for but, your health. But where's forward? Without guilt, just with regret and sadness and that's about it. Yeah. You've got to keep the hope for yourself, don't you? You know. Yeah. You're fooling yourself, but never mind. I could bring her home for a day, overnight, a weekend, um, but then it would, I'd, I'd have to sort of take it back because it, it would just be too stressful. Mm. And at least I know where she is, she's safe. Whereas I can't keep my eyes on her all the time. Been a great chat. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. So we're just sitting there. Yeah. Hi, Andy. Hi. Beautiful jersey. There'll always be a be an empty room waiting for it, and an open heart waiting for it. She, she definitely made me happier, that's for real. And if you had your time again, <laughs> I'd do it all, all again. Yeah, I am, I am so lucky. Lucky to have her in my life, yeah. Still my best friend. Yeah, I think of her every day. She's always with me. Well, I down by the riverside, down by the riverside, down by the riverside. You know, but I go down by the riverside, way down by the riverside. Woo! Give yourself a clap. Just know that I always love you. Even when your best is gone, I will always be beside you and love you until all that is left is this song. funding from New Zealand on air.